Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. God has given us every spiritual blessing. You told us yesterday, verse from Philippians. We're talking about soul and spirit, how to sub- how to submit our soul life to our spirit life. And uh, you mentioned also that humility and dependence on God are a key and how pride and arrogance are our biggest enemies. Because they're very much of the self-life, of the soul, not of the spirit. They're fleshly. I'm going to turn to Colossians today. Paul says in verse 6 of chapter 2, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Now, that is is a wonderful description of how to live in the Spirit with your soul submitted to the Spirit. let's, Let's just repeat it. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, and if you're a Christian, you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, because when you became a believer, God took hold of your life and put you into Christ. You are rooted and built up in him. So what you want to do in your life now is to express him, not just to express that self-life that is in opposition to him. Strengthened in the faith as you are taught, so God teaches you by his word and by his spirit through programs like this how to walk in faith and dependence upon him, overflowing with thankfulness. Why? Because... In everything, even when your faith is being tested, it will prove to be genuine and God will show forth his faithfulness and he will enable you to overcome. So that is the way to live. Now, immediately, Paul follows this by a warning. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends upon human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. In other words, beware of anybody taking you back to soulishness, to depending upon the soul instead of the spirit. Be absolutely sure that you will not allow your mind to be influenced by hollow and deceptive ways of thinking. It may seem very clever, may seem very rational, but they're not the revelation of the truth. Be sure that nobody takes you back to depending upon human tradition, on religious traditions, or upon living just in the same way that you have always lived in the past. Because if you submit yourself to the Spirit, to Christ in you, then he is going to express his life through you and things are going to change and you are going to be transformed even in your soul life from one degree of glory to another. And then do not depend upon the basic principles of this world. The world will keep trying to draw you back into its ways of thinking and acting. And we live in the world but we don't live according to the standards or principles of the world. We are also in the kingdom of God, and we are to express the principles and standards of God's kingdom. I guess principles of the world would make us feel very fearful about certain things. Fear must be a big enemy. Well, it's just joining in the way everybody else thinks. Um, Basically, I mean, we're surrounded by the world's thinking. Hi, uh, you know, it, it amused me a little while ago when um, there was a, a, very, a big controversy about um, whether there should be thought for the day on Radio 4, you know. Why should there be this religious slot? And I thought, well, it lasts for three minutes, I think. Um, 
uh, it's a very variable quality. I'm not making a case out for it. But there are three minutes given over to what is possibly uh, spiritual thinking. And that's three minutes out of 24 hours of broadcasting. And for almost the rest of the time, you're getting the world's thinking. And there the world wants to try to shut out those three minutes. I mean, it's crazy. But you see, that's the way the world operates. That's the way government operates. Governments do not operate according to spiritual principles. So our present government has made one decision after another that is clearly contrary to the word of God. But that is the way governments operate according to reason. They want to please people so they get re-elected. So instead of forming opinion, they go along with opinion because otherwise they're not going to get re-elected. And so you see constant compromise in the political scene. And you even had the former prime minister saying the art of politics is compromise. Well, the art of obedience to God is never compromising. You cannot compromise with the will of God. So those two ways of looking at life are completely different. And we have to live as Christians in a world that is governed by politics. But we ourselves are governed by Christ. And so we're to be good citizens. We're to obey the law. But we are to live by the principles of God's kingdom, which is spiritual, not natural, which is supernatural, not natural which is of the spirit, not of the soul. And this is why Christians should appear so different. So uh, there's this good contrast uh, that Paul is talking about in Colossians. And he goes on to say, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. In other words, the fullness of God was expressed in Jesus. But then he makes the most astonishing statement. And you have been given fullness in Christ. You have been given that same fullness of life that Christ had. And isn't that what Jesus said? The thief comes to steal, kill, destroy, but I have come that men may have life and have it in all its fullness. The abundant life of God, the eternal life of God, life in all its fullness. And so he says, you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. So that life of Christ that you have within you is greater even than the political powers and authorities. It's greater than any power that man could have, greater than any authority man could have. Now, I repeat, God wants us to be good citizens, but he wants us to live as citizens of the kingdom of God, where we're exercising the power and authority spiritually. And that power and that authority is within us. And God does not take it away. We can ignore it. We can choose to live just at the natural level instead of the level of the spirit, but God will not withdraw his spirit. He will not take away the life that he's put within us. We can grieve God, but he won't leave us. We can ignore God, but he's still there. And this is the wonderful thing about the mercy uh, and the grace of God. If we go on then in Colossians to verse 20 of chapter 2, we read, Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, to living just according to the soul, just according to the natural life, why, as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. He's talking here, you see, about the religious laws and rules and standards. These are destined to perish with use because they are based on human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom, but their self-imposed worship, with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. In other words, you are not going to control those natural soulish instincts just through religious rules and regulations. 
It can only happen by submitting yourself to God, submitting your soul life to the Spirit. And this is what I've been saying these last two weeks again and again in different ways. And the Word of God substantiates that because what does Paul say next? Since then you have been raised with Christ because we're living in Christ, we've been raised with him. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died to that old way of thinking, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So he goes on to explain, put to death then what belongs to those soulish instincts that oppose God. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which has been renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. So you see, we are called to live the new life. You put off everything that is not of Christ, and you put on to your soul life everything that is of Christ. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 